Hey guys, I felt like I wanted to make a second video and this will be a long video going over the psychology of Nick. Nick is Team Atlas. It's a real website in Canada and it has a Facebook page. It has a website that is working that you can order Pokemon and magic cards from. Let me set the stage for you. The video is titled $3,000 Loss on Fake Chinese Counterfeit Magic the Gathering Las Vegas. At this current time, it has 42,000 views. So 42,000 potential customers have looked at uh, this Nick guy. I'm being told by multiple people it was scripted. And Nick actually thanked Rudy in the beginning for being really nice and at the end. That image is actually Nick. Nick is the only team member on the Facebook page. The script is ridiculous. I don't know why Nick would volunteer and sacrifice his store reputation for this script. So for this video, I'm going to assume that Nick was in on it, even though the video doesn't directly reference that. And Nick does look surprised. He looks actually surprised when Rudy slams the protector and breaks it. And he does look surprised when Vintage Magic puts the card in his mouth, as I'm sure many of us would. Uh, even if it is a fake card, Magic cards are not that tasty. And even if it was an old card, imagine how old it's a 25, 30 year old card and it has germs and oh my, it's just kind of disgusting. Uh, essentially, this is Atlas. I have deleted Nick's last name. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the right guy as how many Nicks could there possibly be and there's only one team member. So he knows it's fake. Uh, the reason he knows it's fake is because he owns and operates an online trading store. Some people have commented that the store is very shady. Uh, essentially, the script runs this way, and I'll show you the comments. I'll show you why you do not want to be part of this Nick. This should be one of your biggest regrets, and this honestly will tank your store. And I'll get into that later. So you meet Rudy. You know the card is fake because you own a store. It would be very surprising given that this is generation one Chinese counterfeits, very early Chinese counterfeit. You know it's fake. You take it to Rudy. Rudy probably tells you it's fake just to confirm. And now you make a script. The script involves you going to Rudy saying that I don't know if this is fake or real. Can you tell me? And then Rudy smashing the case on the ground, which I think was unscripted, but it might be scripted. You picking the pieces of the case from the ground like some type of, I don't know what, but you're not an alpha, obviously, in this case because Rudy smashed her case and you're the one on the ground picking it up near Rudy's flip-flops. Not a great look. Not a great look at all. All right, so that's the first act. The first act involves you pretending that you don't know if the card is real or not. Rudy smashing the case because you didn't bring a screwdriver, although you're trying to sell the card. Uh, later, you now are on the pretty much on the floor picking up the pieces of your now smashed case, which is your property, right? Your property has been damaged at, at this point. Your case is no longer, even if the card is fake, you could have used the case maybe maybe an extra dollar or so. So you have lost some value at this point. The act stage two is Rudy condemning you for trying to being a scummy seller and calling you a name. And that is the name that is now associated with you because you're a scummy seller, right? Or did you go to other vendors trying to sell this and saying that you didn't have a screwdriver? screwdriver. It seems logical that someone would do this and as many of the people in the comment suggest, it's very scammy. Um, and that is what Atlas Collectibles, visit their website. It is one of the largest Canada's, it is one of Canada's largest MTG online stores. 
that he can not tell the difference between an alpha or beta, real or fake. Uh, so this is the character you're being portrayed as. Maybe you do know it's a fake, and I think you do. But the character you're being portrayed as is someone who owns a store and does not know a Generation 1 Chinese counterfeit. That's very dangerous if I own a store. I would not be happy with you buying cards for me if you couldn't tell the difference. All right, so that is Act 2. Act 2 involves you on the ground pretty much groveling and you looking surprised because I don't think that was supposed to happen and you being called by Rudy a scumbag for trying to sell this card to other people in the case when you don't even have a screwdriver. All right, so you've lost your property. What could be worse? Well, let's bring in some people. Let's bring in Vintage Magic and a Travis guy, and let's have them tell you to your face that it's fake. It's so easy to be uh, fake that anyone should be able to recognize it is fake. So multiple people now are going to tell you to your face that this is super easy to tell if it's fake. Uh, Rudy will ask, can I rip it? You say yes. And then the last act involves Daniel from Vintage Magic eating it and feeding, trying to feed some of it to Rudy. Your card. Even if it was a counterfeit, it is your card. It is your property. That case is your property. So here is, uh, and Travis King, he was part of it. Um, what do you think most people watching this video will think about you and your company? Do, they, do you believe that they will have positive feelings towards you? Just read the comments. I mean, just read the comments. Nick, read the comments, please. Um, do you, I, I couldn't find your comment. I looked at all the comments. I could not find your comment. Um, I'm being told that you did comment somehow. I would love to interview you because as a store owner to another store owner, your reputation means everything. It takes decades to build up a reputation, but it takes seconds, in this case, three minutes to destroy it. Um, the reason I felt like that it might have been real is what type of person would volunteer for this script? What per type of person would volunteer to pretend not to know if the card is real or fake while owning a magic store and then have the card case mass in front of them, have to pick up the pieces, and then being told by multiple people it's fake and it's so easy to tell it's fake, having a card ripped in front of you, and then worst of all, Daniel is now eating the card He's actually eating literally the card that was in the case that supposedly you didn't know was real or fake is being eaten in the span of three minutes. This happens in three minutes. Why would anyone sign up for this? Like, what are you hoping to obtain from this, Nick? Like, do you think people watching this video will go to Atlas Collectibles and say good stuff on the comments? I love Rudy's disgust when he sees how fake this card is. He wanted to end the video and walk the blank away from this guy. There's no way he didn't know it's fake unless he's never seen a magic card before. You blanking own a store, and this is what people are saying to you. And you have no defense against this except it was a script. It was staged. Why would anyone... You have a t-shirt advertised. I mean, if this wasn't bad enough, you have a t-shirt on camera advertising your store. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you, as soon as the video hit, you got 10,000 people ordering stuff from your store because they were like, you know what? I want, I trust this dude. I trust this dude. But the comments don't seem like it. I'll rip the card. Absolutely. One, 3,000% he knew it was fake. He was way too okay with ripping it if you didn't know it was fake or not. Why are you so eager to do the most destructive test first? So let me let me explain this to you, Rudy. And I hope you guys watched to the end of the video because I have a very, I, I mean, it's taken me a long time to get to the point, but I actually do have a point. I promise on this video, Rudy benefits from this video. He gets views. He gets to become the Wolf of Wall Street again. He gets to increase his uh, following. 
I mean, it's his personality. This is what he's supposed to do. Vintage Magic gets likes the video, and even Travis King, right? I mean, people asking, who are these people? I'm really interested. So their subscribers will increase, their views will increase, and their um, opinions, the people's opinions of them uh, as an expert for Vintage Magic, an expert on old cards, because he's eating the fake card. And uh, we assume that he's not going to eat a real real card. Maybe he will, but I don't know. I assume that he wouldn't do that because it would be very dirty. So that shows you the confidence he has that it is, is a relatively new counterfeit card. Uh, and then Travis, who I think I've interacted with him maybe a few, a few times before. I know he seems to be friends with Edwin, if I'm correct. Now he has a channel and he will get promoted too because people are interested in knowing who these other characters are. And people are interested in knowing who you are, Nick. And what is Atlas Collectibles? Where is it located? Does it have a Facebook group? Does it have a Facebook page? This video was secretly sponsored by Team Atlas. The logo was cent centered in the frame for a long time. I mean... Think about this for a moment. You, I'm assuming you're not that that silly to sponsor a video like this, but everyone benefits from this but you, Nick. Just read the comments. Read the comments. No one here is thinking Atlas Collectibles, yep, selling great cards forever. I want to buy from that place. No one is thinking that. Just read the comments. They either think that you don't know if it's real or fake, but you own a store, which is very dangerous regardless, or that you're trying to scam people. So they either think that you have no knowledge, and that's very dangerous because if you're buying cards that you don't know if it's real or fake, and then you're reselling them online from Canada, why would anyone buy from you when you can't even tell if a clearly fake card is fake? Seems not like a store I want to buy from. And R2, you are a scumbag. Now let me get to my point. I finally get to my point. What if we change one small thing about this scenario? Let's assume that you, Nick, buy a real, you get a Mox Jet or some type of Mox and you switch out the fake one, the clearly fake one for a real one. Now you seem like a hero. Rudy gets his views. Vintage Magic still becomes an expert. Now, he doesn't get to eat the card, of course, but he gets to be like, yeah, this is real because of XYZ. Travis gets to become an expert as well. So Vintage and Travis both actually, they get the same type of glow, if you will. And Rudy gets to make a video which will get as just as many of you saying that someone has found a, a real card in a great collection, one of the most valuable cards in Magic, and that gets lots of views. You know why that gets views? Because I every time I turn on the blanking YouTube, it's this dude found this in a garage sale. This dude find this in an estate. This guy got a black lotus from a repack. Like, those videos go viral. I don't know why. I, 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 honest, the reason it shows up is because I do watch them. I do know it's sometimes fake, but I still like them because I'm like, oh my God, he found a black lotus and he paid 20 bucks. Wow, amazing. Of course, I know it's fake, but it's like entertainment, right? Most entertainment is fake, like sitcoms and all. That's not real. If they change one little piece of this script, this acting, everyone benefits. You seem like a genius for purchasing it. Rudy seems like a genius for, you know, and he gets the views, if not more views, because he's found someone who got very lucky. And he's an expert, and now he's confirmed that it is real, and you have got lucky, and then you can do find this. The reason that those things like Storage Wars and all these things are so popular is people like finding treasure for pennies. If anything, that, that video would be more popular if the card was real. If the card was real, it would be just as popular, and it would be just as good for Rudy. It would be just as good for Vintage Magic. It would be just as good for Travis because now they're the experts identifying it is real, and everyone feels good. Hey, this random dude found a, you know, obviously we know it's scripted and staged, but everyone would have a good feeling at the end of the day. Instead, just read the comments.
Read the blanking comments. No one thinks you're a hero. They either think that you're clueless and somehow you own a store or you're a scumbag. So what is... And you're not a kid, right? Love how Rudy keeps asking the kid if he's been trying to scam other vendors. Like, bro, relax. He came to you saying he wasn't sure if the car was real from the get-go. The guy claims he spent $3,000 on a collection and that a Mox Jet just magically came with it, but couldn't be verified as authentic at the time of purchase. Major, major red flag. Rudy had every right to be suspicious, especially the I can't tell if it's real or not line. Give me a break. The guy is a predator or a blank. Either way, you don't want his business. I mean, this is the best way to emphasize I'm making a 17 plus minute video telling you, Nick, in the future, at least don't wear a t-shirt with your company name. Please. Just think logically about this. It would be like, um, have you guys watched, there, there, it was a show like To Catch a Predator, right? And it would be like, we had to hire because we couldn't find real predators. Like, let's say like, me and Weds created a show like that and we couldn't find real predators because we're not like attracting them right for whatever reason. And we paid an actor to come as and pretend to be a predator. And we told the actor, hey, we're gonna give you some magic cards. What we need you to do is pretend to be a predator. Are you good with that? And you know, we're not gonna make we're not gonna make a disclaimer. We're not going to do an interview in the beginning or at the end to tell people it's fake. Because you really need people to believe it's real. And the dude's like all right, cool. All right, hand me your driver's license, okay? It's okay that we announce your name and lo your location and your address and we make up some fake stuff about you? Yep, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Who would volunteer for something like that? Like, who would volunteer to be an actor in something like... It reminds me... The reason I'm mentioning this is because it reminds me of um, Arrested Development, the, the blue guy, Tobias. Uh, there was an episode which was very similar, and he was an actor, and Tobias is not, like, very smart, right? And he pretty much gets caught on to catch a predator in his own home because he thought it was an acting gig. My gosh, Nick. Like, I don't know what to say. This video has to end.